this gun, this is where things get interesting because I covered these Moscow attacks when it first happened. I had very limited amount of receipts at the time, but I found some interesting stuff. For one, you have Russia and Putin that say, yeah, we believe that ISIS played a part in it. Yeah, technically there was ISIS fighters, huh? But they're not the fucking masterminds behind this. You mean ISIS who completely disappeared? Remember Trump used to take victory? He took a victory lap? Trump, remember, remember when Trump said, we destroyed ISIS? And then every single Republican candidate for office was running as we destroyed ISIS. We destroyed ISIS. And then white people was like, yeah, I'm going to vote for Trump because he destroyed ISIS. And all of a sudden, ISIS is back. <laughs> and people don't ask questions about that. I thought you destroyed ISIS, Trump. And now they said ISIS is doing attacks in Moscow. Interesting. If you destroyed ISIS, wouldn't they be attacking us? I thought we destroyed ISIS. If we destroyed ISIS, wouldn't they attack a United States ally? I don't know. Israel, for example. Kind of weird that didn't kind of weird that ISIS never attacked Israel. Kind of weird, isn't it? You would think that if Trump destroyed ISIS, that he that they would take vengeance by going after Israel. <laughs> It'd be a great time for them to go after Israel. Now they got Hezbollah and Sarah going after them. It'd be a great time to go after Israel. Nope. They decide to go after Moscow, though. But people think they're the mastermind? Putin says Islamic extremists raided council hall, but attack masterminds are yet to be found. Russia says it is hard to believe Islamic State could have launched Moscow attack. Essentially, anyone with a functioning brain understands this. Anyone who understands geopolitics understands this. We know that the Islamic State may have played a part in this. People need to understand nuance. They may have played a part in it, but they are absolutely not the masterminds. And then I found this. I'll see what other receipts we can find, because this is interesting. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't really hope this. Oh, Jesus Christ. If this is true, I just fact check this. If this is true, I see multiple accounts tweeting about this. I got to fact check this. Breaking. The investigation has data confirming the receipt of significant sums of money in cryptocurrency from Ukraine to the perpetrators of the terrorist act in Caucus, reports the investigative committee. Here's another tweet. Breaking. Russia's investigative committee says it obtained evidence of link between Caucus attackers and Ukraine. So I'm doing my due diligence. I'm, I'm trying to fact check this to make sure this is true. I'm trying to find other sources. Let me know in the chat what you guys see as well. But they're saying that Russia has evidence. They said it was paid in cryptocurrency. Is there anything else? Look, everyone's tweeting about it. It's confirmed that Moscow terrorists received a significant amount of cash and cryptocurrency from Ukraine. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so that at least three people I saw on Twitter tweet about it. What I find very uh, satisfying is like the more conservative or liberal-minded people who thought they hated thought they hated communists. They thought they hated communists, but they follow and love my work, and they tell me like, "Bro, I thought communism was like liberalism." <laughs> like, there's so many of these people that I like, remember. I had a libertarian. Uh, I think it was Lion Cosgrove from the Gray Zone. He was like, "Bro, I would vote for." a communist like you way before I vote for a liberal or Republican. And that's Lion Cosgrove. He's a, a libertarian from the gray zone. So a lot of these people who have extreme anti-communist beliefs, they got those anti-communist beliefs because of the Western left not understanding how to sell and how to live as a Marxist. Because Western left leftists turned communism into liberalism, a lot of social conservatives and a lot of Americans this started showing disdain towards it because they thought that was what it was. So now that they see RBN, they see RBN, they see me, they see Rome, they see CJ, they see our whole group, and they're like, oh, shit, I didn't know that was what, what a Marxist was. <laughs> they thought a Marxist was that white liberal college woman with purple hair. <laughs> and I think, even though I have a disagreement with Haas, I think Haas served that purpose as well. Haas is very brash. Uh, 
he puts a lot of hyper masculine beliefs, but it's very important for us for people to see that comments aren't these weak, liberal, feckless fucks that we've been painted as. I disagree with Haas on some takes, but people need to see that comments are Muslims like Haas, socially conservative, you know what I mean? The the idea that Americans have about Marxists is completely distorted. Do you got the Black Panthers, an organization that many conservatives now would praise? They they was a Marxist Leninist organization. Do you have people who tie communism and Marxism with white privileged college kids? But the true most successful Marxist Leninist organization of our time was the Black Panthers. And even the Black Panthers was infiltrated. Even the Black Panthers wasn't perfect. They was infiltrated. They, they, and we need to learn from what happened to them. That's why I'm extremely harsh on these people who spread PMC talking points because they had uh, um, FBI influ- uh, infiltrators, CI infiltrators. You have former Black Panthers who are now doing fundraisers with Zionists. Actually, let me see if I can find. Oh, I really hope I can find this receipt. Fuck, because they were they were just they were just a dialogue in Black Twitter. Fuck, I really hope I can find it. Hold, on, guys, please. I got hold, hold. here. It is. Here it is. Here it is. This was just discourse in Black Twitter. This. Um, here, look at this. I'm gonna show you guys this unplanned. This was giant discourse on Black Twitter, and I'm gonna show you guys what I mean. The black none of these organizations are perfect. We got we got to learn from the mistakes of revolutionary movements of the past. So the reason why we are so hard and we demand people to get issues right, the reason why we call out CIA talking points, is because. Organizations got infiltrated in the past. So we're trying to prevent that from happening now. Look at this. At 16, Yvette Stevens joined the Black Panther Party. She was responsible for selling the Black Panther newspaper and helping start the free breakfast program for children. You might have known her as another name, Chaka Khan. So Chaka Khan did good work before, but Chaka Khan is an infiltrator. Here is Shaka Khan, who now raises money for genocidal Zionists in her late age. She's she's now raising money for Zionists. You have former Black Panthers who endorsed and campaigned for Kamala Harris. But people are surprised when they hear the rant that me and Ron went on about our black elders. You was either a black revolutionary or you was murdered. You were the black revolutionary and murdered or you were someone who did good work before and then you sold out. Why should we be? Why, why should we forgive these people who sold out like this? And this is a big part of narrative narrative that a lot of people forget. She did great work as a Black Panther, but she was an infiltrator. That's why at RBN, I am the only, we're the only channel that went over the CIA infiltration tactics that they use. Remember the CIA, I pull it up again. The CIA infiltration tactics. I was like, I tweet, I I had tweets about this that went viral multiple times. Because I'm the only people that talk about it because I understand this is a giant problem. People wonder why many people was against forced to vote. It's why. People forget that the Black Panther, the left movement, they get infiltrated. 